and it's spelled N Z N. That's I take it again. N Z I N G A. Mbande is M B A N D A. Now she was born in 1583 in the 16th century. My brother, my sister. She was an African ruler who served as the queen of the Ambandu people. Yes, the Ambundu people of Angola. In fact, she became the queen of the Ndondo and the Matamba people. If you are ready, let's get deeper into the African history class. <laughs> Now, Nzinga was born into the royal family of the Ndondo and Matamba people of Angola today. And born into the ruling family of the Ndondo and Matamba people, she received military training and political training as a child. And she demonstrated enough prowess for diffusing political crisis as an ambassador of the royal family. As a little child, many people came to her to resolve conflicts. They said she was overly endowed with wisdom and it was not surprising to have all that people come to her with issues and most of the time she solved them without thinking. Queen Nzinga Mbande. Now listen to this interesting thing. Her father was called Ngola. And Ngola is self-translated in the Matamba and Ndondo language. Simply means king. So what? He was Ngola Colombo. Ngola Colombo. Ngola is spelled N G O L A. Colombo is K I L O M B O. Ngola Colombo. Some people also simply called him Ngola, just king. And he was a king of the Ndondo people. His mother was called Kangela Ke Nkombe. Kangela Ke Nkombe. And Kangela is spelled K-E-N-G-E-L-A. Ka is K-A. And Nkombe is N-K-O-M-B-E. The Ka there, the K-A simply means off. So Kangela of Nkombe. My brother, my sister, listen to the interesting thing. Her mother was one of the slaves of his father, the king. So he was born to a king by name Ungola Kilombe. His mother was one of the several slaves of the king. So as he was moving around, he saw a very beautiful woman and decided to marry her. In fact, it must be noted that she was not the only slave woman that Ungola Kilombe married. He married several other slave women wives my brother my sister but interestingly amongst all the slaves that he married as his wives this was his favorite wife my brother my sister now the father was a king mother was a slave woman who later became the favorite wife of the king Nzinga had two sisters, Kambu or Lady Barbara, as her name was changed by the Portuguese leader. Her real name, original African name, was Kambu, K A M B U. But later the Portuguese changed the name to Lady Barbara. And this wonderful woman we're talking about today, my brother, my sister, is about to give you a shocker. Now Nzinga Mbande had two sisters and a brother and when their father the king Ngola Kilombe died 
they took over the throne and started to rule all over Ndondo and even Matamba. Oh my God. They worked very hard after the death of their father. And according to legend, the birth process had been very difficult for Kegela, the mother. When she was about to be born, it was terrible for her. She went through several days of labor. Several local or traditional midwives came to take over. But it was difficult. She went, she was in labor for seven solid days. Can you believe this? Now her name is Zinga itself. Actually comes from uh, the traditional name for umbilical cord wrapped around the neck. When Nzinga was born, the umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck. And therefore, they decided to call her Nzinga. Mm, 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 mm. My brother, my sister, this is the African history class. My brother, my sister, today we are talking about Nzinga. And at a very young age, she was taught military training taking through military training and also through politics of the royal family. She grew up into a good and powerful strong soldier. Oh my God. Very strong soldier. It was around a time that the Portuguese came in trying to colonize the area. Oh gosh. And she stood firm. As the queen of Ndondo, she gathered her army and all of them came around her. She took them through guerrilla fighting training. In fact, she was able to keep them very strong and powerful. And they fought against the Portuguese. The Portuguese were never able to bring her down. She fought them and kept them at bay. Several times the Portuguese came back trying to sign a treaty with her. But she refused and decided that she was not ready for such a truce. Now the Portuguese waged war in a brutal style, burning villages and taking hostages. And they were able to capture a number of Ndondo people and Matamba people who they made slaves. In fact, history tells us that they were able to get about 50,000 people who they carried to Portugal as slaves. They built forts in Ndondo and also in Matamba. Oh my God. And they tried to take over the power of the great queen Nzinga. But Nzinga stood firm and fought them seriously. She had soldiers who were so powerful and who listened to her. Now when the Portuguese realized that they could not take over her, they had to find a way of trying to sign a certain treaty with her which she refused. Now the situation grew so, so terrible for Ndondo when in 1607 the kingdom was invaded by the Mbangala. Now the Mbangala is another ethnic group made up of very bloodthirsty mercenaries known for their ferocity in battle and religious power. Oh my God. They were so spiritual and people believed that Bullets did not penetrate their skin. In 1624, the brother of our heroine for today, in Zinga Mbande, died of mysterious causes. Now, some historical sources say he actually uh, was poisoned. Others to say that he actually committed suicide by poisoning because the Portuguese were constantly hammering and he believed that they would be able to take over Ndondo very soon. This happened in 1624. Our heroine took over the whole throne at that time. Now before his death, the brother had told Nzinga to stand firm and be able to protect the pride of the land and their father's pride as well. Yeah, well, let him, let him 
He mentioned it to the whole area that Nzinga should be the new king of Ndondo. And when he actually died, Nzinga rose to the throne and she became the queen and king at the same time. Oh my God. She had supporters. Ritualists all came to join her. Juju men and women joined her and helped her with some rituals. Ah! And she also assumed the title of Ngola, just like her father. Ngola simply means king. So you now understand what it means to say Angola, the land of kings. Ngola means king. Angola is a plural, land of kings, or simply kings. My brother, my sister, there was a very big funeral that was arranged for the brother who died. He was a good king and he loved his people. But the might of the Portuguese, he feared he might not be able to withstand. So he took his own life, as some historians wrote. Some other people also said he died uh, uh, by poisoning, but he did not commit suicide. They are two different things. <laughs> And Zinga also had family members trying to fight her throne. But she was able to put all of them where they belonged. And Zinga stood very firm and fought for, the, for her land. And Zinga approached Kasa with a marriage proposal. The couple were married and after the wedding, she had her nephew killed in, in Zinga's view. Final revenge for her own murdered son. What happened, my brother, my sister? And Zinga had a son. And this son was murdered, my brother, my sister. Murdered by a family member because they believed that this son would grow up and become king, inheriting the throne from the mother. But they did not want this to happen, so they murdered him. But she found a man by name Kasa, who was also a member of the wonderful Ndondo kingdom and also a royal. My brother, my sister, they got married and boom, they had a beautiful wedding. And after the wedding, they decided to kill the person who killed Nzinga's son. <laughs> And Zinga did not only fight the Portuguese, she also fought family members who fought her all through her reign as queen because they believed that a woman should not ascend to the throne the way she did. Men should rather rise to that position. In fact, she fought the Portuguese left, right, and center. The Portuguese had never had such a powerful opposition than the opposition of Zinga. She was so powerful. She fought them night and day and gave the Portuguese a very difficult time. They were never able to bring her down. In 1627, Nzinga finally decided to negotiate with the Portuguese, sending a peace delegation and a gift of about 400 slaves to the Portuguese and telling the Portuguese to stay away from a kingdom. In fact, the Portuguese decided to abide and they agreed to stay away from Ndondo. And uh, whilst Nzinga made the Portuguese feel like they were friends, she actually saw the Portuguese as enemies but was able to deceive the Portuguese into believing that she was an ally. She was able to keep the Portuguese away from her land. And her land soon started to enjoy peace just by telling the Portuguese that we have signed a treaty and we are at peace with each other now. And Zinga conquered more lands, went around expanding a kingdom. And in fact, trying to stay away 
from all wars. The Dutch also came in. And then she found a way of becoming an ally of the day of the Dutch. And she used the Dutch to defeat the Portuguese and send the Portuguese permanently away from her kingdom. Today, my brother, my sister, and Zinga is our heroine in the African history class. <laughs> And Zinga accepted Christianity and Anna de Souza was added to her name. In fact, she remained a Christian. Her kingdom soon had a very powerful outreach that reached out to so many other kingdoms. It flourished like magic. Agriculture thrived technology thrived. There was peace. She used the Dutch to defeat the Portuguese after being an ally of the, or supposed ally of the Portuguese for so long. And when the Portuguese were finally defeated, oh my God, there was total peace in her land and everybody thrived in business, peace, love and harmony. <laughs> Now, after all the wars with the Portuguese ended, and with the new Dutch allies, Nzinga attempted to rebuild her kingdom, as noted by Linda Haywood, an historian. She did so well, building so many forts, and building so many, uh, many more uh, palaces for herself and other kings yet to come. She was able to pick up women and put them in powerful positions, establish a kingdom beyond what it used to be. In fact, her kingdom had been ravaged by war. The Portuguese coming in and destroying it before the peace treaty. And also, the Dutch coming in. She now resettled to build back her kingdom and she succeeded in building it beyond what it even looked like. The business with the Portuguese business with the Dutch gave her a lot of peace and much more. She had so much wealth and she spent the wealth on her people. Hey, she imported silk and goods from Europe and she became the queen of the whole of the area so endowed with riches, power and of course fashion. <laughs> Nzinga fell ill in the 1660s. Protract, protracted illness for a very long time. Nzinga increasingly became very weak while she was looking for somebody to take over. When she was gone, she knew that it was time to go home. In October 1663, Nzinga fell ill with an infection in her throat and became bedridden finally. By December of the year, the infection had spread to her lungs and Nzinga died in her sleep on the morning of the 17th of December, 1663. Today we remember Nzinga Nzinga. She is a national heroine in Angola, especially amongst the Matamba and the Ndondo people. In fact, she's a national heroine. And Zinga will be remembered as one of the greatest queens we had in our history when she realized that the might of the Portuguese was something she could not contend with. She started to play ally to the Portuguese. And then she sneaked in the Dutch and set the Dutch against the Portuguese. The Dutch fought against the Portuguese while she had a peace. The Portuguese no longer came to attack her and her kingdom became very peaceful. When the peace treaty was signed finally, she had to contend with the destruction 
Remember, her own brother could not withstand the power of the Portuguese. He died. Some historical sources say he committed suicide. And before he died, he said, Nzinga will be the right person. She has the heart of a man. She's a lion, not a lioness. She took over the throne. And Ndondo saw the biggest expansion during her reign as queen. She became so powerful that her people loved her. And there was peace all through when she built the kingdom all over again. She died on the 17th of December in 1663. In several cultures, she is renowned. In fact, so many books have been written about her in popular culture. So many movies have been made about the great Nzinga who set the Dutch against the Portuguese and the Portuguese against the Dutch whilst they were busily fighting attention was taken away for, from her kingdom and she grew her kingdom in peace there are statues that are standing in Angola in fact in the capital Luanda you will find statues of Nzinga and Bande today we remember this great black woman there is an Angolan film called Njinga Queen of Angola which was released in 2013. Find it and watch it. It's a beautiful movie. Streets have been named after her. In fact, a major street in Luanda is named after her. And a statue of her was placed in Kinakzizi um, on an impressive square in 2002. Dedicated by President Santos to celebrate the 27th anniversary of independence of that country. Angolan women are often married near the statue, especially on Thursdays and Fridays. Those were the days in Zinga herself was very actively uh, engaged in building back her kingdom. So women in Angola, they get married under the statue. They want to have the spirit of Nzinga, so powerful and so strong. They want to be able to build and not to destroy. They want to be able to be strong enough to set their enemies against each other. And whilst the enemies are busily fighting, they build their own homes. My brother, my sister, today we remember you, mommy. Mommy, we remember you. She died on the 17th of December, 1663. In the burden of knowledge, I ask you now that you know what would you do, now that you know the story of Nzinga Mpande, how would this impact your own life? In the burden of knowledge, now that you know what would you do, be an any or lay a mini of our fears in the Kagani, Mezaka in a year, I papango, Bukaya, Nunfifia, Yenya, Nukaina, Wobana, Ehu, Ebeden. Missy Bana, a bay up a day. Lele and Jima sing a bed, couldn't Lele and Jima sing a berry. It's been the African history class. And today we've been talking about Zinga Bandi. Too, 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 too,